Trig starts off with right angle triangles, which is fantastic, but of course not all triangles are right angle triangles. So we need to come up with some ways of handling non right angle triangles, and the first one is our sine rule. So here's our standard triangle. What I do is drop a perpendicular down and create two right angle triangles because we know how to deal with those. Now in that right angle triangle I could say well h over c is the sine of b so I now know that perpendicular height is c sine b. I could do the same with the other triangle and I get an expression for h which is b sine c. Well it's the same h so therefore c sine b must equal b sine c. Playing around with that we get what we recognize to be the sine rule. C on sine C is B on sine B and we could extend that out to the third side as well. So in any triangle A over sine A is B over sine B is C over sine C. That's the sine rule sort of. More about that later. But let's just do a couple of quick examples. So if we want to find a side, H is what I find. So it's H over sine H and we need to find another pairing that we have. A side where we know the opposite angle and we've got that one there. Q over sine Q. Sub in, play around with it, bit of calculator work and we end up with our answer. I did mine to one decimal place because in the question it was to one decimal place. So if they don't tell me, I tend to match what the question has done. Of course, we could find the angle rather than a side. In that case, I just turn the sine rule upside down and I'll have sine y over y is sine z over z and substitute in, play around with that, and we get our angle of 46 degrees 58. But this brings up an interesting point with the sine rule. You need to make sure your answer makes sense because the problem with the sine rule, sine is positive in both the first and the second quadrant. So if the angle is obtuse, your calculator won't tell you because your calculator will automatically give you the acute angle. So you need to see, well, hang on, does this answer make sense? Remember, angle sum of a triangle is 180. So if you get an answer and you look at it and go, hang on, that doesn't make sense. The angle sum of a triangle won't work. Then possibly you're talking about an obtuse angle. But this is the one to keep in mind. The largest angle will always be opposite the largest side. So if you've got the largest side, there's a chance you might be talking about an obtuse angle. Now, the obtuse angle could only be opposite the, op the largest side because you could only have one obtuse angle in a, a triangle so it would have to be the largest one. Here's what the sine rule actually is. So here's the triangle. I'm going to put a circle around it, what we call the circumcircle. So the prefix circum means around. That's why perimeter, if you like, for a circle is called a circumference. So around. That is actually the sine rule. A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. It will actually equal the length of the diameter of the circumcircle that goes around the triangle. Area of a triangle, seeing we're talking about the sine ratio, makes sense to look at this one as well. Well, we know the area of a triangle is half base times height. Uh, half A times H, I've written that as here. Well, again, I could say, well, H over B is sine C. I could substitute in for H and I come up with this new formula for the area of a triangle, half AB sine C. So I don't actually need to know the perpendicular height. Of course, it could be any combination. Basically, it has to be two sides and the included angle. That's the information you need to find the area of a triangle. So for this one, it would be a half DM sine F, subbing in. And of course we're talking about an area, so it's units squared, and I did mine the two decimal places on that one. So there's a recap of our sine rule and area of a triangle.